All in favor of approval of the November 10th, 2020 minutes, say aye. 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 We have a motion to pass the regular session minutes of November 17th, 2020. So moved. Aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that motion carries unanimously. Let's go on to agenda revisions and submission of documents and motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to future agendas. Staff has pulled items 9I okay. and 12D. Both are the Longmont Housing Authority items. Those will be brought back later. Based on what we learned is if we brought it in at this point in December, even if even that it was only one month, it would have meant that we would have had to bring all of their financials into our CAFR next year. Anything else other than the Weld, Weld County issue? All right, so I, I, the reason I wanted to move this from the bottom of the agenda up to here, um, I want to uh, explain what the hell happened. Uh, so my council members are kind of up to speed. And then I also, first and foremost, I wanted to take action to put something on the agenda so we could discuss what's happening. If it comes down to it, I never said, let's don't give Weld County and other counties that don't comply healthcare. What I said is, if we face a situation where there is a bed, or there is a hospital room or a situation where we cannot get the resources. And there are two people needing access to one doctor or one ICU bed. And you have one person who comes from a jurisdiction that complies and another one that does not. It would only be fair to say, hey, if you're complying, you get access to the bed. I never said we're gonna cut it off from Weld County. I was proving a point that you're either part of the solution or you are the problem. I do think that there are some things that we need to do and say to our neighbors to the east. Yes, thank you, Mayor Bagley. And um, I don't think I need to say any more, except for that I understood what you were trying to do and the premise of what you were trying to do. I am going to make a motion. I sent all of council a resolution that I am going to uh, read um, and then we'll vote on. And just, so it is a resolution in support of the governor's temporary restrictions on COVID-19. So I move that we accept this resolution. I'll second it. All right. Again, the resolution is quirky. This is just to put it on the agenda. The resolution was to direct staff. So it's not a resolution declaring anything. It's just Joan resolution small r saying, we're gonna direct staff in a very public important way to please prepare something for our next meeting. All right, so we've got a motion on the table. And that motion is directing staff to prepare a resolution um, asking, I'm, I'm summarizing here, asking the uh, uh, asking staff to reach out and admonish, um, I believe the word was demand, that our neighbor in Weld County, the commissioners, uh, encourage themselves comply and encourage their residents to comply with the governor's emergency orders pertaining to COVID. Uh, that last part that you just read, remember that. Uh, Councilman Waters made a friendly amendment to this that we were going to support the legislation. Uh, yes, okay, a, a letter sub supporting what the legislation that's going to the governor, encouraging that the state withhold funding from Weld County and other counties that fail to comply with the governor's uh, emergency orders pertaining. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, that motion passes, uh, carries unanimously. Thanks. COVID update and then a special report. And Mayor Council, actually today we have a fairly um, extensive report to you all. There's been a lot of activity and part of it is there have been changes uh, um, at the CDC level, CDPHE in terms of how we manage exposures and what we deal with. Um, when we look at this, this is what we started off with. And so when you look at the cumulative incidence rate you can see all of the counties in red. And then when you look at the two-week testing positivity rate, you can see that we're at 6.7%. This is the number that Council Member Hidalgo Farring was referring to earlier. But you can see that, um, you know, counties are all over the place. And, and then when you look at the hospitalization status, you can see um, eight to 11 days. This, when you look at this chart, this again um, is the chart that they started creating when they saw you know, in the light blue, the cases that were associated with CU. The big piece on this one is that about 8% of the cases in the past week have been about among CU affiliated um, county residents. And then when we look at the um, number of Boulder County residents testing who are so considered probable with long-term care facility, 
Um, this is one of the highest two-week case counts for long-term care facilities that we've had. When you look at the five-day average of number of new cases, I mean, this is, who would have thought that we would have said 157 looks good, but if you can see the peak and where we are, we're definitely trending in the right direction. I, when you look at the new case rates by county, I think it's, it's really important to see the red, which is Boulder County. Um, over the past 10 days, new case rates in all metro counties have been dropping. But so since uh, the 1st of October, Longmont has had the, the highest um, case rate per 100,000 of all the municipalities. So this graph shows a weekly number of COVID cases um, by a select group of municipalities. In the past seven days, about 34% of the new cases have resided in the city of Boulder and 40% have resided in Longmont. So what does this mean in terms of age range? The same breakdown by age range, 18 to 22, still has the, the majority of cases. And I think this is, you know, when we look at cases among zero to four and 10 to 14 year olds, that has actually remained relatively stay, steady or declined recently. Trends in case rate by age group, um, they're diverging. And case rates have decreased among zero to 44 year olds. They've remained re relatively stable among 45 to 64 year olds. They've increased by 25% among 65 to 70 year old, 74 year olds and 29% among 75 plus in the past two weeks compared to the previous two weeks. Um, we're continuing to see persistent large disparities among our Hispanic Latinx population. In the past seven days, 43.4% of the cases or 344 have been among Hispanic, Hispanic Latinx and 52.5% of our cases, or 416, have been among white, non-Hispanic. We're gonna continue evaluating it, and we're gonna to continue to work with our neighborhood resources group in Carmen to really see how do we continue to engage in conversations with our cultural brokers. So the two questions that I heard the most when I was out there is one, is the testing free? And two, if we test positive, what resources are available if we're unable to go to work? So we're, we're wrapping our hands and trying to improve that communication. There has been a decrease in the absolute and no change in the relative disparity in, in this population. And I think this is what you're seeing in this, in terms of the, the Latinx population. The five-day average percent of tests that were positive is 6.2. Um, so when you look at this, this is the five-day average, not the two-week average. So that's where you're seeing the differences in the number. And this is just to show the movement, really not gonna focus. Um, because there is a three-day lag between the, the time a test is conducted and when the results are reported, similar piece, but what you're seeing is this movement here and here in the 65 to 74 in the, 75 plus. So here's a question, hospitalizations. Um, the data, this data is cumulative over time. This is where we sit today. And if you remember this early on, um, we've always been in this green area here, it's moving closer to yellow. That's what we're hearing from our medical providers in terms of having staff availability. Um, in terms of the hospitals, um, the number we had today, we had 120 hospitalized in Boulder County. That's actually down a little bit. So here's what the hospitalizations in Boulder County looks like. Um, and this is not just specific to Boulder County residents. Um, this, is P th th this is individuals that are hospitalized in Boulder County. And then here's a question that we're having now. Level purple is really the hospital surge metrics. And so the metric, the first metric is approaching the need for medical crisis standards of care. Um, our Boulder County hospitals are reporting that they're not approaching this. And then this is what it looks like in terms of Colorado. And then I included these slides. So this is part of the slide deck because I think there's been a lot of conversation about the flu and COVID and the similarities. When you look at this emergency department visits for COVID related symptoms and diagnosed flu, Symptoms, blue is diagnosed flu, um, and then green is the total ED visit. So you can definitely see once again, what the hospitals are having to deal with. Um, and then this is what it looks like in Boulder County versus the other counties. As you know, we're in red um, and you have to be in those other levels for two weeks in order to level down. Um, we are expecting to see increases in cases associated with Thanksgiving based on what we've seen at other holidays. 
All right, let's move on to the SoulSmart Award presentation. Uh, good evening, Mayor Bagley and council members. Uh, my name is Tim Ellis, and I'm the Renewable Energy Strategy Manager um, for the Energy, Strat Energy Strategies and Solutions Group at LPC. And I'm um, here tonight because I'm, I'm pleased to present or bring before council the presentation of a SoulSmart Silver Award to Longmont. In addition to the award itself, one example of the national recognition we received already uh, through this award is that Longmont, there's our solar feasibility study, which we have recently completed, was highlighted in the most recent SoulSmart monthly newsletter. I'd like to acknowledge some of the city team members who made this award possible. So a big thank you to Assistant City Manager, Joni Marsh, Blas Hernandez and his team from Buildings Department, and Ann Lutz from the Energy Strategies and Solutions Group at LPC. Uh, without their efforts, we wouldn't have achieved this success in this award today. My name is Nick Kaza, and I'm a program manager on the sustainability team at the National League of Cities. I'm here to present the city of Longmont with their SoulSmart Silver designation. SoulSmart is a national designation and technical assistance program that recognizes solar energy achievements of local governments. On behalf of the entire SoulSmart team, I'd like to congratulate the city and all the staff that were involved, making sure that Longmont received the recognition it deserves for being a leading solar community in the United States to the consent agenda. So we are going to go ahead and read it. We're pulling D and I. Mayor, uh, item 9A is ordinance 2020-65, a bill for an ordinance making additional appropriations for the expenses and liabilities of the city of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1st, 2020, public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15th, 2020. 9B is Ordinance 2020-66, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 3.04.610, paid holidays designated of the Longmont Municipal Code on personnel rules. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15, 2020. 9C is Ordinance 2020-67, a bill for an ordinance amending Chapter 14.08 of the Longmont Municipal Code by adding Section 14.08.647 to allow for adjustment to wastewater billing for commercial and industrial use of cooling water. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15th, 2020. 9D is Ordinance 2021-01, a bill for an ordinance conditionally approving the River Set Annexation, generally located north of Boston Avenue and east of Sunset Street, and zoning the property MUE, mixed use employment. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for January 12th, 2021. 9E is Ordinance 2020-69, a bill for an ordinance designating the James and Francis Wiggins House at 534 Emory Street as a local historic landmark. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15, 2020. 9F is Ordinance 2020-70, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the City of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport, Hangar Parcel NH-T2, to KLMO Hangar Gang, LLC. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15, 2020. 9G is Ordinance 2020-71, a bill for an ordinance repealing and reenacting Chapter 11.04 of the Longmont Municipal Code regarding the Model Traffic Code and adopting the 2020 edition of the Model Traffic Code for Colorado by reference. Public hearing and second reading scheduled for December 15, 2020. 9H is Resolution 2020-128. A resolution of the Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and the Department of Navy for a cooperation with civilian law enforcement officials agreement. 9I was pulled from the agenda. 9J has approved the 2021 City Council meeting schedule. And it passes unanimously. Ordinances on second reading, along with their public hearings. We're going to go ahead with 10A. Ordinance 2020-59, a bill for an administrative ordinance approving the grant of a deed of conser <clears throat> conservation easement. I move ordinance 2020-59. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. The motion carries unanimously. Ordinance 2020-60, the bill for an ordinance authorizing the city of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H-14B to Craig Nelson. I move ordinance 2020-60. Second. All right, it's been moved by Councilmember Christensen, second by Dr. Waters. All right, 2020-60. Aye. Let's go ahead. Aye, still. Aye, still aye, everybody. All right, nay. All right, ordinance 2020-60 passes unanimously. Ordinance 2020-61, item 10C, a bill for an ordinance authorizing the city of Longmont to lease the real property known as Vance Brand Municipal Airport Hangar Parcel H-37 to Robert Singer. I said I moved 10C. Oh, okay, I'll second it. 
All right. Any further discussion, debate? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. Ordinance 2020-61 passes unanimously. This is uh, item 10D, number one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to have the public hearing all at the same time, but then we're going to go ahead and vote on these individually. Run through, the, run through each one. Uh, so 10D1, Ordinance 2020-62, a bill for an ordinance approving a pu public-private partnership agreement among Diamond G Concrete Company, Costco Wholesale Corporation in the city of Longmont in furtherance of development of a Costco membership warehouse. And 10D2, Ordinance 2020-63, a bill for an ordinance amending Title IV of the Longmont Municipal Code on Revenue and Finance by creating the Harvest Junction East Special Revenue Fund. 10D3, Ordinance 2020-64, built for an ordinance making additional appropriations for expenses and liabilities to the city of Longmont for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2020. Item 10D4, Resolution 2020-130, a resolution of Longmont City Council approving the intergovernmental agreement between the city and Boulder County concerning use, maintenance, and repair of Quicksilver Road. Item 10D5, Resolution 2020-131, a resolution of, Longmont, of the Longmont City Council approving an agreement and revocable permit with Aggregate Industries. WCR Inc. for maintenance of Quicksilver Road and access to North 119th Street. Finally, 10D6, Resolution 2020-132, a resolution to Longmont City Council authorizing loans from fund balance in the city's fleet fund to the Harvest Junction East Special Revenue Fund and the Affordable Housing Fund and providing for repayment of the loans from the Harvest Junction East Special Revenue Fund and the Affordable Housing Fund. Aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. So let's go to 12A, Longmont Waste Services Program Review. I'm Bob Allen, Director of Operations in Public Works and Natural Resources, and I'm here tonight to talk about our Waste Services Program. That um, I'd like to acknowledge the men and women that work in Waste Services. They've had a pretty challenging year this year with the pandemic. Uh, a lot more. They've actually done an ex excellent job and put in a lot of hours doing it this year. I'd um, also like to acknowledge uh, Charles Caminides. He's your Waste Services guru. Uh, he's a real resource asset to the city and um, wanted to acknowledge him for that. Our waste services program is guided um, substantially by our sustainability plan. The goal for that plan is to divert waste from landfills. Uh, one of the projects that we did recently take on that has a, a net benefit to the city and environment is the conversion of about half of our solid waste fleet over to um, compressed natural gas. It, uh, the primary services, obviously our core services, which are curbside trash and recycle, and then the operation of the Waste Diversion Center. Um, as I mentioned, the voluntary composting program, um, some a la carte services for large item uh, collection on request and uh, dumpster rentals. Next, supplemental services. Um, I think most of you are aware of these. Um, they range from paper shredding to some holiday recycling events. Uh, despite some of the concerns that it's not easy to recycle some hard to recycle items in Longmont, we actually do have options for quite a few different things um, at our Waste Diversion Center. City also charges a waste management fee. It's uh, $2.96 per month per resident. Um, it generates about 1 million annually. The pay as you throw rate structure um, was implemented in 2017. So the impact of that, this is the distribution of uh, the two cart sizes in 2016 and prior to pay as you throw. We, um, as of September of 2020, we're at about 58% participation in the 96 gallon uh, container and up to 10% in the every other week. We're up at, um, as of September, up to 21%. Municipal waste diversion, um, waste diversion for our residential waste at the curb is about 26%. Um, that's a solid number, um, probably, you know, anywhere from 50 to 75% of uh, what is set out at the curb uh, can fairly easily be recycled. So let's talk a little bit about the future of some of the programs. Um, pretty much any approach we took eventually would converge with about 25% participation. Future of recycle, um, certainly we'd like to um, enhance curbside diversion. Uh, we think there's a lot more opportunity there. We are currently funded for, for um, the programs that, that we deliver today. Um, with some growth in the community, um, we would, we're at a point now where we need to add an employee. We're at a point now where we need to add an employee. Um, that's something we intend on doing 
um, the first of the year, that would be just to address uh, some of the growth in the community. We have not added employees uh, to our solid waste program for, uh, it's been uh, 10 or more years, other than the employees that we added um, the, for the composting program. Uh, Future the Waste Diversion Center. This, this one's a little bit of a head scratcher. It, it needs some types of updating. We think that uh, possibly collaboration with the county is a better option and maybe some options that would be more um, conveniently located to Longmont. We are, um, so these are some items just so you know that we do not accept um, at Longmont. Future of outreach and education, um, it's very important that we, you know, maintain current levels of, of recycle and composting. We don't want to lose ground there. So other, other means to increase waste aversion, these kind of circle back to some of the comments you heard from the community tonight. So I believe my motion was for city staff to bring back the larger conversation in pieces that are actionable. I will second that. So adding a piece in there where we have those zero waste practices for city sponsored events for when we permit, um, give permits for use of public spaces. Motion on the floor is for city staff to bring back some low hanging fruit, some easy right now targets that, that they're going to put it in terms of dollars so they can start immediately and then bring us back pieces as soon as they can. All right, so let's go ahead and vote on the motion and then get started on, on making our, our city cleaner. And all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously, Bob. And let's move on to mayor and council comments. Just like to you know, read into the record for people who are watching the next day that today was Giving Tuesday. Um, I just want to tell everybody that they're willing to take your money tomorrow. So if you missed Giving Tuesday, don't miss Giving Tuesday. Can we have a motion to adjourn, please? Move to adjourn. Motion carries unanimously. Good night.